Hello and welcome to another episode of the MATLAB and Simulink Robotics Arena. Uh, for today's episode, uh, I've got Yashoda Virala with me uh, from, from the engineering development group here at the MathWorks. And today we're going to talk about modeling and simulation of an autonomous underwater vehicle using the aerospace block set. Um, so let, let's, let, let's, let's jump right in. Uh, uh, in terms of today's agenda, Yashoda and I are going to cover what the basics of an autonomous underwater vehicle are. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what it means to model a um, an, an AUV and, and, and how can we design controllers for it. Um, then we talk about our, uh, how we actually put this model together in, in simulation and we talk about some control laws that we could we could use for this. Without wasting too much time, let's go and jump into Simulink and see what um, the model looks like when it's running, right? So you should yes, take it away. Uh, now we're looking at the Simulink model basically, uh, which, which is trying to track a reference velocity which is given by me. And um, th this reference velocity here in our scope is represented in yellow and then basically our submarine trying to follow it is in blue. So as we can see clearly, a disturbance in one dimension is basically fall, uh, is basically propagated into another, another dimension. So that is how generally a dynamics of a submarine or of uh, or an airplane is when you when you have like disturbance in one dimension, it propagates to other. So this is the trajectory uh, of the submarine, like through the time it was trying to follow the given reference velocity. Uh, uh, and again, this is based on on, on, on that reference velocity. That exactly. You to start right. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Let's hop back in the slides and let's try and get a better theoretical understanding of what's going on in in these uh, in this model. So yeah, let's let's get started with the basics of what an auto autonomous underwater vehicle is. So um, so so an autonomous underwater vehicle is basically a computer control system which is deployed under the surface of the sea to perform a certain mission. But uh, to accomplish this mission, there are a few things which are really necessary for uh, autonomous underwater sub uh, vehicle. So the first thing is basically sensors to basically. Uh, perceive what is around it in the environment and then the second thing is after you perceive this you need to send inputs to a controller which basically tells you where the submarine has to go and then these control inputs are sent to a propulsion system which basically provides the thrust necessary for the submarine to move in the desired direction let's take a look at the dynamics of a submarine so dynamics of submarine is quite similar to the one as of an aircraft gotcha. and uh, as uh, as in an aircraft the main forces are basically thrust lift drag weight and buoyant force and also we need one important thing is just as an aircraft all these forces can induce moments okay. which basically can rotate the uh, submarine in all three axes so the, as we discuss the basic forces of a submarine the buoyant force and lift move the uh, submarine upward that means they act in the upward direction and the propulsive force acts in the forward direction where the submarine is moving and the drag acts uh, the opposite to that and then we have the weight which pulls down the submarine so this is this is a, a, a typical uh, a, a typical sort of um, free body diagram of, exactly. of, of of any body in space, right? Um, so yeah, these are the uh, rotational motions of uh, submarine. The first thing is about the z axis called yaw, and then the third, the second one is basically about the x axis called roll, and then the third one is basically pitch, which is about the y axis. Okay. So coming to the translational motion. Uh, the first motion is surge where the uh, submarine moves forward and heave where the submarine moves upward or downward and then sway where it moves sideward. Okay. So, so, so uh, as you can see, we've, we've got we've got six degrees of freedom, right? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, that's a lot of math to solve, right? Yeah. yeah. Let's take a look about why the aerospace block set is a good way to actually model the six, six tau uh, forces. So basically, uh, a six tau block in the aerospace block set takes in your force and moments, and it can compute where your submarine actually moves and what is the rotation uh, degrees uh, of your submarine. Okay, so 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 we can we can think of the six tau block as an equation of motion solver for six exactly. degrees of freedom. Yeah. Gotcha. You don't have okay. to solve all the complex okay. math required. So you, you basically feed in the forces and moments, and it'll it'll compute all, all the other okay. parameters for you. Gotcha. So. Um, then we have the rotational and coordinate transformation block, which makes sure uh, your forces are al aligned in the right direction and are accurate. And then you have like sensor models to basically introduce real life noise into your sensor val into your sensed values. Yeah, and and, and so, so the, the the rotation blocks are, are really important because you know th there's always the whole frame of reference concept, exactly. and depending on, on 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 where what's acting, where you want to model that accurately yeah. in your in your system. So, uh, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let's take a look at the schematic I followed for actually modeling the dynamics and control. So first, I have a reference which I give into my submarine, asking it to follow a certain position or a velocity or a certain mission. Then these inputs go to the controller, and the controller basically uh, is responsible for moving, like giving the inputs to the thrusters and things like that. And then we have the plant model, which, be, which we'll discuss in the next slide, which basically models a vehicle in the environment. 
and then then we have the sensors to basically capture information and give to the controller so that it can give commands where to go. Gotcha. And now uh, in the plant model, we have two main things. The one is the vehicle model, which basically models the propulsion forces and moments, and then the environment model, which basically computes the hydrodynamic forces uh, like lift and drag and hydrostatic forces like weight and buoyancy. So, so, so these are these are all the forces that are acting on 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 the body that we're modeling with the six degree of freedom block, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, so, so can, can you talk a little bit about, about the modeling workflow? Yeah. What, what is what is the way in which we we expect people to to, to, to go through building these uh, these uh, simulation models? Yeah, sure. So uh, the first thing what you need to do is you need to estimate all the kinds of forces on your submarine. That is like find out where your thrusters are, in which direction they're they're uh, oriented, and then like all the forces like exactly find your drag coefficient, and then find out like what drag you, your submarine might. Uh, experience when it's moving at a certain velocity. Gotcha. Yeah. So once you estimate these forces, you create a pl plant model out of this and then put a dynamic solver to actually take these forces and compute your motion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you do various kinds of open loop testing where uh, you put your uh, reference to go like a certain in a certain direction and you see if your exactly. submarine is following doing that basically. Then once you see that the open loop testing is successful, then what you do is you try to make a controller which actually uh, makes you do like com more complex missions. Gotcha. Okay. So uh, with, with, without, without wasting any, any time, let's actually jump into the simulating model and see what all we've just spoken about, how that how that gets translated into the simulating world, right? Sure. Model. So first in the plant model, we have uh, the propulsion forces and moment sub subsystem, which uh, we have uh, we have the inputs coming in from the controller, and then uh, these uh, these input co uh, commands are. Uh, convert into PWM signals given to the motors, and then the motors basically compute the thrust. So, so how have you how have you model the actual motor? How have you mo mo model the transformation from PWM to actual thrust commands? Yeah. So uh, basically, th these are the transfer functions which we used uh, to basically convert the PWM signals to actual thrust. So we use the system identification toolbox, and then uh, the system identification toolbox gave us these transfer functions based on the data given by Blue Robotics on T100 and 200 thrusters. So just just for our viewers out there, system identification is a process where you can uh, you can sort of estimate estimate a transfer function or, or a state space model of, of, of some dynamic system um, using nothing but input and output data. So we've actually we've actually done a video on, on, on how to model these thrusters. You can go and take a look at that. The link is down in the description. So next, let's, let's take a look at the environmental forces and moments uh, on the submarine. So first we have the hydrostatic forces which uh, is basically uh, due to the environmental forces like weight and buoyancy. And then uh, I have made a nice mask for you guys to actually update like the density of water and other things to make your uh, forces accurate. So if, if, your, if your system changes, you parameterize them in yeah. the way that you can. That's yeah. good. Yeah. And then uh, we have the hydrodynamic forces, which are the lift and drag. And then to actually compute this, I, I have a variant subsystem in which I have a low fidelity uh, modeling, and then I have also done high fidelity modeling. So, so the, yeah. uh, what what is what is the difference between low fidelity and high fidelity, especially for for this case? Yeah. So, for example, in low fidelity, I've done something like I've put the drag and the lift as constant, as, oh, and then good. the drag coefficient and the lift coefficient as constant, so that they don't change with your angle of attack and angle and side slip. So, so it's it's a it's a it's it's a good representation, but it's not an accurate, accurate representation, representation, right? Okay. So, in the accurate system, uh, in the accurate, I actually model the the changes in lift coefficient and drag coefficient due to side slip oh, and gotcha. angle of attack. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. And uh, as we can see, uh, all these inputs and moments are computed, and then they go into the dynamic solver where uh, the we use the six stuff block, which I was earlier talking about, and then we try kind of take all the velocities and the position and the body angles of the uh, submarine to you to like to uh, to visualize it. To visualize it. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, after the plant and model, uh, plant and environment model, we have basically the sensors which are uh, which are kind of uh, simulating it to be on board. So here also we have two things, um, two uh, variant subsystem, which is the system without noise and the system with noise. In the system without noise, we are actually not adding any noise to the uh, perceived parameters, but then uh, but the system with noise, we are actually have a sensor block which where we are adding a noise similar to a Gaussian noise. And we are making sure the system is kind of real life. This is this is interesting because you know obviously your your controller is eventually going to go onto onto a real life system at yeah. some point. And when the moment you have a real life system, you have real life sensors yeah. and there's real life noise, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's it, it's it's good that you're able to 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 sort of represent that in in the virtual in, world in the as well. Virtual world. Yeah, yeah. 
and then uh, now we, since we added noise it's our job to actually to filter, filter it out it. so that our controller can do a good job in tracking so we've added an internal filter where we have used a couple of low pass filter low pass filters to actually reduce the high frequency noise and then we only get the signal which is uh, important so then all these uh, all these signals given by the uh, sensors are put into the controller so here we have modeled two types of controllers one is a position controller which is going to follow the reference position given by you and then one is the velocity controller which is going to follow the given velocity and as you can see uh, this is a, a simple controller using pid constants which were like tuned to like do the job okay okay Oh, perfect, perfect. So, uh, hey, uh, thank you for showing us how yep. this um, um, how, how this model is built. Let's let's hop back to, to do some key takeaways and and, and close yep. out the video. Sure. Right. So, uh, before we close out the video, I want to also discuss like a few alternate control mm -hmm. laws which uh, like uh, the students may follow to actually get out better results. So, the first one which I wanted to discuss is model predictive control. So, model predictive control is uh, basically a way in which you try to um, linearize uh, linearize the model at each operating point, and then try to compute your control uh, algorithms based, like basically predict a horizon, uh, cho choose a prediction horizon, and try, try to find out the control step. So, then the other way is actually to use an LQR controller. Yeah. This is really useful when you have uh, when you have like limited amount of batteries on your systems. Mm -hmm. So, LQR control can be used to uh, basically track or like basically control a system but also try to control minimize the amount of inputs given to actually control the system as as i said if you control your thrust uh, thrust values you can you can have more battery life interesting uh so um lqr is actually a, a very popular controller used at, at robusta which is one of the competitions that that, 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 that we go to um, um if you want to know what an lqr controller does and, and more details on that you can check out that there's another video in the description where uh this the uh, uh, team members from the University of Alberta's RoboSub team came and spoke to us about how they use MATLAB to design their LQR controller. Um, but uh, in terms of key takeaways, I think I think the, the, the one thing that, that, that we want you to take away from this is uh, vehicle dynamics can be modeled at various fidelity levels based on the simulation accuracy to, uh, desired. We, we, we've seen we've seen different sort of fidelity levels for the for the hydrodynamic forces as well as as, as well as the actual the sensor modeling and stuff like that. Modeling usually has a pretty steep learning curve, but but you know th there's always a starting point, and, and and it's 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 good to figure out what's important to you and and, and figure out where your starting point is. Um, you can use components on the aerospace block set to simplify your modeling approach. Um, again, sensor models with noise can help test more realistic scenarios. We, we, we saw how we can add noise to your simulation, which would actually um, accurately represent what your um, uh, what your actual set sensor data looks like. Um, and then last, you, you, can, you can always go and take a look at more advanced control strategies like LQR and MPC. All right. So, um, uh, first of all, thank you, Yashodar, for taking the time out to to speak to us uh, today. Um, in in terms of in terms of getting in touch with us, if you like the video, please uh, please let us know. If you didn't like it, please let us know anyway. We just, we want to hear from you. Uh, you can get in touch with us on our uh, on our Facebook group or through our email address, as well as check out the other offers available. Um, thank you so much, and I hope to see you again on the Robotics Arena.